Thank you so much, Chairpersons, for those kind words of introduction. Good morning, everybody. At the outset, let me thank the organizers of IS and West Zone for giving me this opportunity of being amongst well-learned stalwart nephrologists and a radiologist, one amongst all of them. So it's a great opportunity for me. So we start with perioperative vascular mapping. Sir has done my job. Half of my job is already done by Bhavikar, sir. I think I could just run through the slides. So basically what is AVF fistula? It is a lifeline for all CKD patients. As sir said, it is an Achilles tendon for all the CKD patients. It is an abnormal connection or passageway, but not congenital. It has been surgically created basically for hemodialysis. There are basic, what is the role of Doppler? There are multiple load, roles for Doppler. One is preoperative vascular ma 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 mapping, post-op AV fistula maturation assessment, monitoring or a routine surveillance of the AV fistula and Doppler is also used for early detection of complications. With all these roles, we would be only looking today on preoperative vascular mapping. So basically, as you all know, there are three types of fistula. The first one, which is the commonest and the most preferred is the radiocephalic fistula at the wrist. Basically, because even if this fails, we have other site open. So we will first go with the proximal fistula. If this is not possible, a brachiocephalic fistula at the elbow, the second option. And the third option is a brachiobasilic fistula. Why? Because the basilic vein is very deep. And so a two-step procedure is required once the fistula is constructed. Superficialization of the basilic vein is required for cannulation. Because the basilic vein in its course is deeper, so, so uh, for hemodialysis, the needle, it, we won't be able to cannulate the basilic vein. So a two-step procedure is required. Hence, this is the last option for a fistula. So this is a radiocephalic radio fistula at the wrist where an anastomosis is done between the radial artery and the cephalic vein at the wrist. A brachiocephalic fistula where the median cubital branch of the cephalic vein is anastomosed with the brachial artery. with the brachial artery at the elbow. After this, the basilic vein is then superficialized for cannulation once it, once the fistula matures. So again, role of Doppler is to evaluate for matura maturation of the fistula. As sir had all, uh, has already uh, given you an idea of the recommendations of NKFDQ, Doppler, uh, they usually suggest a Doppler sonography of the upper limb and arteries in conjunction with clinical examination in all patients who have been considered for AV fistula because usually dialysis patients have a lot of blood investigations, lot of catheters, so very frequently the veins are thrombosed, they are obese. So you might not be able to clinically judge if, the thrombo if there is some chronic thrombosis and a, or an acute thrombosis or if there is atherosclerotic disease because quite a few CKD patients are hypertensive, diabetic. So a Doppler is mandatory for a proper evaluation. What are the technical requirements? We require an ultrasound machine with both B mode and obviously a Doppler mode. Linear array and multi-frequency probes with a 7 to 4 megahertz, with a 4 to 9 megahertz, we need not change the frequencies. We have multi-mode, multi-frequency transducers these days by all the machines, so you need not go about changing the frequencies. It is done by the machine itself. Technique as sir said non-dominant arm because usually if the patient is right sided we use the left arm, if the patient is left sided we would use the right arm. It, the examination is usually done in supine position if the patient is very breathless you could do it in a semi recumbent or sitting position, whatever is comfortable, a warm room and a tourniquet is tied above the elbow level. For arterial evaluation you do not require a tourniquet so it is suggested you start with the arterial evaluation first. Once you are done with the arterial evaluation, we tie a tourniquet above the elbow level and then we go with evaluation of the venous system. So this is how we map the arteries and then a tourniquet and we map the veins. So for arterial mapping, we usually suggest that evaluation is done from the axillary to the radial or ulnar arteries. Although this is all is uh, what is suggested, we usually in our day-to-day -day practice 
you would usually do it from the brachial artery up to the radial artery because if you are getting a triphasic flow in the radial and the brachial arteries, you are not actually bothered to go and see at the at the uh, axillary artery. So when you are evaluating the axillary artery, when uh, when you are evaluating the artery, what are the parameters we look for? We look for the vessel diameter, wall morphology area of stenosis or occlusion within the artery and the assessment of blood flow. Vessel diameter alone is not going to help because only if the artery is good in diameter but it has a lot of atherosclerotic changes then uh, then by doing the anastomosis it is difficult because there are, there are a lot of achromatous plaques. Also the distensibility if the vessel is not healthy it is not going to dilate and so your fistula is not going to mature. So the uh, wall morphology is uh, again very important. Here we have shown the measurement, we have taken the radial artery measurement at the wrist which is 2.9 mm here. The wall is proper, regular. In contrast to this, you see a radial artery which is showing which is showing lot of atherosclerosis. So such arteries are not useful in, in fistula surgeries because with such atheromatous plaques, fistula is not going to mature. Even if we use this artery, take out a little bit of atheromatous, so this is not a healthy artery. So we need to report such arteries so that the surgeon uh, doesn't go for utilizing such arteries. Blood flow measurement, typical triphasic flow is the hallmark, is the hallmark for all upper limb and lower limb arteries. So because they are high resistance, they have a high resistance flow. You have a high peak systolic flow, a reversal in the end, uh, a reversal in the diastole and an end, uh, end diastolic again you get an upstroke. So this triphasic flow is a hallmark for all upper limb arteries. If you have this triphasic flow, it suggests that the artery is a normal, has a normal flow. We usually would suggest a radial or a brachial artery with a flow rate of more than 50 ml per minute for construction of AV fistula surgeries. With a normal diameter, a normal wall, a very good triphasic flow. So this is how arterial mapping is done. We can give such diagrams in our reports where we show the brachial artery. We, along with the measurement of the artery, we would also give the depth of the artery from the skin surface which helps the surgeon to know how deep he needs to go. So now when you are doing a Doppler, two other things which just would take about one minute is once you are taking the radial artery flow, ask the patient to tightly clench his fist for about two to three minutes and then release it. After releasing, if it is showing a hyperemic response, that is what suggests that the distensibility of the artery is normal. Because after construction of the fistula, the artery needs to dilate and supply the AV fistula. So if the artery is showing a good increase in flow after vasoconstriction, that means that after, constru after construction of the AVF, the artery is going to supply the fistula well. So if you are getting a hyperemic response, one, one good thing and other thing is, because you are going to utilize the radial artery, please just occlude, that is Allen's test, occlude the uh, radial artery and see if the ulnar is able to supply the parmar arch. Basically just to rule out that there is uh, vascular compromise post -vas fistula surgery. This is usually only applicable for wrist fistulas. For distal fistulas or fistulas at the brachial level, you are not bothered because the radial and ulnar are going to be patent in such situations. This one is all with the arterial uh, mapping. For preoperative venous mapping, superficial and deep veins both need to go off the upper limb. Again, from the wrist level up to the central veins need to be evaluated. A tourniquet, as we have already seen, is placed around the root of the arm or just above the elbow, and the superficial venous circulation is examined with transverse scans. So we know that the uh, uh, cephalic vein runs along the radial artery and drains the uh, lateral side of the upper limb. The basilic vein runs along the ulnar artery and it, uh, it is uh, drains the lateral side of the arm. So the basilic vein is, ha is having a deeper or it uh, enters into the deep fascia and has, hence it becomes very deep at the level of the elbow and that is the reason we usually go for cephalic fistulas or we use the cephalic vein for the fistula construction surgeon. So as we saw in uh, re, uh, arterial uh, evaluation, these are the points which we need to check when we are evaluating the veins. Appearance of the vein, 
force of the vessel, tendency of the vessel, caliber and distensibility of the vein and the presence of collateral surface. Each and every point here is very important. We need to check the vein and this won't require more than a few seconds to evaluate. Appearance that is it is appearing hypoechoic, it is compressible which suggests that the vein is patent. Compressible that means there is no intraluminal thrombus. Again, CKD patients have a lot of blood investigations going on. So these veins might show wall thickening or just a, a recanalized ecogenic thrombus. So evaluation of appearance of the vein is very important. Course of the vessel. Because if the vessel is tortuous, so the surgeon has difficulties when the procedure is being done. So at least an 8 to 10 centimeter of linear vein, which is a very straight vein, not tortuous, not showing any wall thickening is important. Patency, obviously, the vein has to be patent. Caliber, we will come ahead in our slides. Distensibility, that is the reason we are applying a tourniquet. Just to see that how good the vein is distensible. And as sir said, if there are big collaterals in 5 to 6 cm around the site of planned fistula surgery, your fistula is not going to get a good flow because these draining veins are going to take away blood from the fistula site. So if there are any major collaterals around the site of suggested or uh, whatever you are going to suggest the surgeon, if there are any big collaterals, please document it so that at least the surgeon could tie up that collaterals and then con construct the fistula. The vein uh, we have already seen should have thin regular walls, it should be compressible, completely and echoic human. Very important, you need to adjust your gains and see that the vein is completely and without any thrombus. The course of the vein should be at least 8 to 10 centimeter a linear course, no torsiosity within the vein. It should lie less than 6 millimeters below the skin surface because even if your fistula is very well functioning and the vein is very deep, it is not going to be possible or you won't be able to utilize that vein for hemodialysis. There should be no accessory vein within 5 centimeter from the proposed site of anastomosis because again maturation of the fistula is a problem in such situation. So this is how a normal vein looks like. Like This is the cephalic vein at the wrist. We have first measured the vein. We see there is a very thin wall, anechoic or a very black type of human. There are, the wall is very thin. Once you try to compress the vein, it is completely compressible. We measure the vein. This is 3.6 millimeter at the level of the wrist, which is a very good diameter. So there were multiple studies which have been conducted about the diameter of the vein but these two studies which are very frequently quoted and followed are vein diameter of more than 2.5 or at least 2.5 millimeter with tourniquet or if you are not using a tourniquet a vein diameter of at least 2 millimeter or more should be taken as a vein for fistula surgery. This is how venous mapping can be done. From the subclavian here, yes, we need to evaluate the veins in entirety. You need to go and check for the subclavian veins as well because CKD patients have catheters, indwelling catheters for very long time and we are very prone to central venous thrombosis, central venous occlusions. So as we said in arterial evaluation, you could yeah, leave it with brachial artery, brachial radial ulnar but for venous evaluation, we need to go and check for the subclavians or central veins as well. So usually CKD patients have dialysis or central lines inserted, they have a lot of swelling. So even if you are not able, we won't be able to insulate our probe too much. But at least indirect signs of central venous occlusion, I will be showing that we need to check for. What we do in the veins is diameter of the vein with or without tourniquet, but what we usually suggest is, is with a tourniquet, diameter of the vein and the depth of the vein from the skin surface. These two things you need to inform the surgeon or your report should be having these two things. Central venous occlusion is very common with dialysis catheters. The Doppler waveform, what happens is you are not able to actually see the subclavian in entirety. So whatever portion of the subclavian where the IJV is entering to the subclavian, if you are able to at least insulate your probe and check if it is showing Waveforms. What you see in the subclavian is uh, waveforms which reflect the heart's uh, activity. You see a lot of phasic flow. If there is a loss of phasicity in flow of the subclavian vein, this is an indirect sign that yes, there is some central venous occlusion or stenosis. You need to report it and this needs to be then documented with a venogram or a CT 
um, window cram. So again, so that is the reason evaluation of central veins or evaluation up to the subclavian is suggested when we are priming a fistula surgeon. So this is how you see a lot of turbulence, a lot of phasing flow in the subclavian vein. But here if you evaluate, you are seeing a loss of phasicity in the vein, in the waveform of the vein. And this is an indirect sign. You are not able to see the thrombus in this portion of the vein. But there is loss of phasicity and this is what you need to tell your surgeon no. Probably there is some amount of central venous occlusion, stenosis, thrombosis and we need to check on this. So uh, probably the, in a nutshell whatever we have spoken about, spoken about this is what it is. Peripheral arteries diameter of at least 2 millimeters. Whenever you are evaluating the artery we need to check for the hyperemic response so that we know that yes the artery is healthy and is going to uh, distend well. A patent farmer arch when a wrist fistula is being thought about. Peripheral veins should be more than 2.5 millimeters with tourniquet. Central veins, respiratory phasicity has to be checked. Graft we are not talking about. I have no personal experience about grafts in our institution, our nephrologists. We are usually only doing native AV fistula surgery, so I do not have any experience about graft, so I am not going to actually uh, talk about that. Central veins assessment is indirect as I have told you and we just need to see transmitted cardiac pulsations within the uh, visualized portion of the subclavian vein. So to conclude, routine use of color Doppler ultrasound along with physical examination to assess patients for vascular access of hemodialysis is important. Why? Because to avoid negative exploration and chances of immature or fistula failure surgery comes down with a proper pre-op AV fistula mapping. So this is very important. Functional quality of the artery is important. Just giving measurement of the artery of the or if the artery is 3, three millimeters, okay, the arterial diameter is very well. But then if the artery is showing a lot of atherosclerotic changes, these need to be reported because only size doesn't matter. The functional quality of the artery is important determinant in the AV fistula success and it is not necessarily related only to the arterial diameter. For evaluating the superficial veins for fistula, the appearance of the vein, wall of the vein, course of the vessel, its patency, caliber, distensibility, presence of collateral circuits within the proposed site of fistula, all these need to be evaluated. All the, although this looks like a very, very elaborate list, but then once you start doing it, this won't take more than 5 minutes or 8 minutes for the entire study. So we should go about with evaluation of the entire system. This is the routine format we are following. This is how we report the fistula. We report the diameters, where it is small in caliber, any um, wall thickening, any wall irregularity and this is how we report it, the distance between artery and vein, why distance is basically important. Distance from the skin is important because once the AV fistula matter, ma matures, cannulation is possible or not, that is distance of skin. But the distance between artery and vein is again important because the surgeon has a um, uh, plan in mind whether he has to go for end to side or, si or side to side. If the artery and vein are very closely placed, he can easily plan a side to side fistula. But if they are too very far, then they, they need to plan for an end to side fistula. So all their planning depends on what we report. So this is how a normal format is. We report the entire thing. Yes, sir. Be done. This is just a short video. Uh, do I have one minute, sir? It's a one minute video. Or it's... Okay. I'll just... I'm done, sir. So this is the radial artery along with the accompanying veins. A very nice... You can see the pulsation of the artery. Seeing a normal artery pulsate in itself suggests, yes, the artery is healthy. Once we've seen the artery, we would just measure the artery, freeze the image, measure the artery. Just to finish immediately. We would measure the artery here. We have taken measurement at the same level, just see for compressibility. See, we have compressed the vein. The vein is completely compressible. Again, we freeze the image.
take the measurement of the vein here, take the arterial spectrum, a normal triphasic spectrum of the artery. This is the longitudinal scan of the artery. Put up color, a normal triphasic flow in the artery. While you are doing this, you can check for the hyperemic response. Just ask the patient to clench the fist and see if he is able, if you see a good increase in flow. From here, we go ahead with evaluating the arteries at the elbow. Here we have gone from the radial, we are going up. Here you see the brachial artery. Again, one important thing is mentioning about any anatomical variants. If the artery is um, branching early in the arm level, we again need to put that on paper. Thank you so much.